Hey everyone, one question that I got recently was how to set up three consoles in the same AES50 network for a front of house console, a monitor console, and a broadcast console, but all of the inputs for all three consoles coming from the monitor console. So let's go ahead and dive in and see how this is set up. So first things first, we gotta talk about cabling. This cable that you're using for AES50 has to be a shielded ethernet cable. It can be a Cat5, Cat5e, Cat6 or better cable, but it does need to be shielded, which means that the RJ45 connector that you have on your ethernet cable does need to have the shield connection on it, which means that there are four pair or eight wires in our connector here, plus a ninth wire, which is a shield that goes all the way through the cable. And it does need to be shielded and connected on both sides. You can get away with an unshielded cable, but I don't recommend it, and Behringer also does not recommend it. So please use a shielded cable for any applications using AES50 cabling. Now that that's out of the way, let's actually dive in to see how this is all going to be set up. So this particular user wanted to have the monitor console on stage and have this be the base section that sends out to our front of house console and our broadcast audio console. And so all of the inputs are coming into the local one through 32 on this console. So front of house console, we're going to take this AES50A and we're gonna connect it here. B from here is going to go into A on our broadcast console. Our sync is going to be from our monitor console right here. And there's a couple other things that we have to do on this monitor console to get everything to communicate with each other. For instance, the output of our front of house console, we will want to use one of the outputs on the monitor console for actually feeding the PA. So let's go ahead and get all of this set up. First thing we're gonna do is start with our monitor console. So we have our monitor console here, which is a Behringer X32, and we are going to set a couple things. We're first gonna go to setup and make sure that our sample rate is set to 48 kilohertz. The sample rate that you have selected here needs to be the same on all three consoles. If you have one that's set to 44.1, you will need to change it to 48. Or if you do need to be in 44.1, you would need to change all three consoles to be at that same sample rate. Next, we need to make sure that our clock source on our monitor console is set to internal, as this is going to be the main hub for sending out sync to the rest of the consoles. Next, we need to verify that our inputs are coming in from the local 1 through 32. So we'll go to routing and go to input and verify that our inputs are local 1 through 8 all the way down to 25 through 32 on this. Next, we will need to go to AES50A. And this is our outputs from this console, which we are sending out of our AES50A to our front of house console. So we want to make sure that these are set to local. 1 through 32, so we have 1 through 8, 9 through 16, 17 through 24, and 25 through 32. Next, we need to tab over to AES50B and set this to local 1 through 8, local 9 through 16, local 17 through 24, local 25 through 32. So this means that any input coming into the back of this console is going to go out both the AES50A port to front of house and the AES50B port to broadcast. The next thing that we'll want to do is route our front of house feed uh, that's coming down the AES50A line into our outputs on this console. Now, because this is my monitor console, I'm wanting to be able to use all 16 XLRs for my monitor mixes. So I'm actually going to utilize the auxiliary out section of this console for feeding my PA. So I'm going to set up my aux ins to be pulled from AES50A 1 through 6. To do that, we would go to routing and go to inputs, and we would actually go down to AES50A 1 through 6, and we would just simply press connect. Additionally, you'll need to go to routing, and tab all the way over until you get to aux. So patch aux. And then we have aux out one through six right here. And all of these need to come from direct out. So the easiest way is to go down to monitor talkback and then scroll up 
And this is gonna come from direct aux one, and then we need to do input LC for the tap. So we're going to assign and then set. And then the second one, we'll go to aux two, aux three, aux four, aux five, and aux six. The very last thing that I want to set up on my monitor console is to have front of house actually be controlling the gains of this console, which can be kind of tricky because you need to have all of all three of you having really good communication. If a preamp is changed, all of you should know because that both affects front of house, it also affects monitors, and it also affects broadcast. So, but I do want my front of house console being the main control of the preamps. So let's go ahead and set up this to do this. So we would go over to setup and we would look over to our global options and I want to select AES 50 port A because I want my front of house console controlling my local inputs on my monitor console. So we would just rotate this down until it says AES 50 port A. And once it says this, it's gonna say enable HA, which is your preamp, to be controlled over AES 50 A and local preamp settings will be overwritten. And once we do that, we can press confirm. The next thing that we would want to do is we would want to go up to HA gain split and turn that on. Now what this is going to allow you to do is over on your channels, if we go and select channel one, we now have a trim here. So we have a trim from positive 18 to negative 18. And what that means is that my preamp on this console is being controlled by my front of house console, but I still have the ability to trim up or down. Now, if your front of house console is clipping this input, then that means that that sound is going to be clipped on all of your consoles that you have connected with this. So make sure you're having very good gain settings on all of your consoles with whatever console you choose to control your preamps. So we're now here at the front of house console and we need to set up our inputs coming from our monitor console and also set up our outputs of the PA to go through our monitor console on the auxiliary outs. So let's go ahead and dive in and do this. So first thing that we need to do is we need to set the clock source to be from our AS50A port, which here in the studio, I have my wing connected on the A port to simulate an X32 connected into the A port. So to do this, we would go to setup, and then we would need to make sure that our sample rate is again set to that 48 kilohertz or whatever you have decided your sample rate is for all three consoles. And then we would go to our clock source and select AES50A. Once we do that, we will notice that our console will come up here on our wing. Now, sometimes what will happen is if you have something connected on your A port and you have not selected your A port, it might show up as red. If you do see red, then that is a bad thing and then you need to look at your sample rate or your clock source to make those correct, either by changing your sample rate or setting your clock source to be from the correct spot, which in our case, our clock source is our monitor console. So now that you have that set, we need to next choose our inputs and our output routing. So go to routing. We have local inputs currently selected on our front house console, which it actually needs to be from our AES50A device, which is our monitor console. So we go down to AES50A, one through eight, nine through 16, 17 through 24, and 25 through 32, all from the A. Next thing that we wanna do is go over to our card if say we were planning on recording something or utilizing uh, any of the expansion card, we would want those inputs pulling from our AS50 device. So let's go ahead and select AS50A, one through 32. We can now record using the XLive, or if you had a Waves card, you can now use the Waves card from these inputs. There's a lot of stuff that you can do with this. So make sure that you add this to your setup. The next thing that we need to do is route our outputs from the console to our PA feed, which is coming off of the monitor console with the auxiliary outputs. Now we have six auxiliary outs on that console available to us, so we need to choose what we want to route to there. So for my case, I'm just going to be sending my left and right feed down one and two. 
And to do this, we're going to go to output one of our XLR, and I'm going to go to main left right, main, and make sure that this is set to post fader. Next, we would go to output two, and we would say main left right, right, and that is coming from post fader. If we had a subwoofer that we also needed to route, say from the center or the mono, then we would go to output three, go to our main, and make sure that's post fader. Or if you had that set up on one of your mix buses, we would just go select one of the mix buses, say mix bus one, assign, and make sure that's post fader. Once we've done this, we need to make sure that our AES50A routing is correct on this console because whatever we send on the output of A is going into the input of A here, and that would be then routing to the six auxiliary outs on the monitor console. So go to routing and tab over to AES50A, and we can see that output one through eight, which is the XLR outputs, is now going on our AES50A outputs, which is correct. So this means that any one through six that we choose on our out here would then show up on the auxiliary outputs of our monitor console. Next, let's go ahead and hop over to our broadcast console to get that set up. So here we have our broadcast audio console and we can see that we are coming out of AES50B and it's going into AES50A and we need to get that all set up. So because our inputs from this monitor console are coming into AES50A, we can actually do a similar and the same setup as we did at front of house. So the first thing that we need to do is go to setup and change our clock source to be AES50A. And then once we do that, we will see our console pop up here with a green light, which means we are good. Next, we need to go to routing and tab over to input and make sure to select AES50A 1 through 32 on our local inputs. So AES50A 1 through 8, A 9 through 16, A 17 through 24, and A 25 through 32. Now this means that any inputs that are going into the local 1 through 32 of the monitor console are then coming out of the AES50B port of this monitor console and into the AES50A port of our broadcast console here, which means that it would show up on all 1 through 32 channels. Next, we need to go change our card settings so that when we record on this console, it is actually recording the things that are on our stage, which would be AES50A 1 through 32. There are a whole lot more complicated setups that you can get with this as far as sending talkbacks down from different channels, which unfortunately I won't have the time to get into any of those today. But thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this helps you in your situation that you have at your church or venue. And again, I love reading these questions that you guys have. So if you do have a question that you feel like I could answer, go ahead and drop it in the comment section below. I'd love to hear what kind of questions that you guys have. Thanks so much.